In this video, I'm going to be talking about what is momentum and the conservation of momentum. On the screen, I have two different definitions of momentum, and I think momentum is one of those scientific ideas to where if you read the definition, it's not going to be very clear what it is until you see applications and examples of what it is. If you take a look online or through many textbooks, it's known as the amount of motion, inertia in motion, or some of the sites will actually simply say um, the product of mass and velocity. Um, so it's kind of all of the above. Um, really what it's considering is the amount of motion that's going on as something is moving along. So if you take a look at our formula right over here, we have the variable lowercase p for momentum, m for mass, and v for velocity. So let's go ahead and label those and write down the units. Alright, so if we take a look at our formula, it's a pretty simple. Um, as we said before, it's the product of mass and velocity. And we have momentum, which is lowercase p. We have m for mass, the standard unit for mass is always kilograms in physics. And then we have the velocity with the standard unit of meters per second. So unlike a lot of other physics um, variables that get sort of complex, um, momentum doesn't have a special or condensed unit, kind of like the, the Newton or the Joule. Um, basically what it is, is because you're multiplying mass times velocity and something that's in kilograms and meters per second, um, once you multiply those two together, you're basically combining these two units to create a unit for momentum. So momentum's unit is a kilogram meter per second. So as you're taking a look at momentum and the amount of motion something has, the way to roughly measure it is the more momentum something has, it's more resistant to accelerating. So basically saying how hard it is to um, make it slow down or change direction is a pretty good indicator of how much momentum something has. So once it's moving, um, is it gonna be really hard to stop it from moving? For example, something like a train or a freight train would have a really large amount of momentum because it has lots and lots of mass and it usually has a pretty considerable velocity. Sometimes a freight train can take over a mile to stop. Unlike a person, which doesn't have nearly as much momentum. So obviously, depending on the size of the person, how fast they're running, um, they're able to um, stop themselves and um, accelerate a little bit more easily. Now let's take a look at the conservation of momentum. It's the total momentum of the system remains constant when you don't consider the external forces. So when you take the momentum of each of the cars before a collision, and we sum it up, that is our total momentum. And although they, they might bump into each other and then move different directions and slow down and speed up, if you still add up the momentum of each of the vehicles, your total momentum is gonna remain constant. If you set up a formula, it's gonna look something like this.
Uh, if you take a look at this setup here, um, it looks like there's really a lot going on, but basically all you're doing is you're using this formula four different times. So if we call the green car object one and then the red car object two, um, that provides us with some subscripts just to keep our um, variables and numbers organized. So basically all you're doing is you're taking the momentum of one car and then adding it to the momentum of the other car. And we're making sure we're careful about using negatives because velocity is a vector. So if it's going the other direction, then this velocity will typically be negative then. Um, and then once we get the um, momentum of each of those two, we have the total momentum of everything before the collision. And then once they hit each other, their velocities are going to change. And if one gains momentum, then the other one loses momentum and vice versa. So overall, the momentum is conserved and it is the same. So we have M1 times V1F plus M2 times V2F. And the sum of those is the total momentum after the collision, which is equal to the momentum before. So you're able to set them equal to each other, plug in some values and solve for some unknown variables if need be. I hope that was helpful in helping you understand what momentum is and how the conservation of momentum works. Thank you for watching and listening.